Today's final Frith photograph takes me about a mile further along the coast to North Foreland, the most easterly point in Kent which overlooks the English Channel. Taken in 1887, it's the North Foreland Lighthouse, which is still working today. Some of these pictures look very different from what it is today. This looks exactly the same. Lighthouses hold a special place in our national life. They're a symbol of reassurance and safety, lights in the darkness, guiding the weary seafarer home. The North Foreland Lighthouse still helps ships to navigate the busy coast of northeastern Kent, stopping boats from running aground, as it has done for 500 years. Jerry Sherwood was one of the last lighthouse keepers in the country, and he worked here. Right, so here we go. I think we're probably... Are we far we're far at worst. We can see it all there, can't we? That's almost exactly... It is, yes, indeed. ...where it was. Yes. So what have we got here? What are the sort of main features? Well, basically speaking, on the right-hand side, we have the principal keeper's cottage. Right. On the left-hand side, the assistant keeper's cottage. OK. And then, of course, the very significant porch on the outside. That's this. Yes. Which we can see in the picture. Now, the oldest part of the lighthouse is this bottom bit, isn't it? That's Just... right, yes. Up to this first course in the middle of the tower. Yes. Uh, that's where the old platform was for the uh, coal brazier. What you have to imagine in those days, of course, is that the coast was completely dark because there was no street lights or any other ambient light whatsoever. Yeah. Even moonlight. Uh, so a small fire like that would have shown up quite a long way. The lighthouse was extended to its current height in 1793. But the final alteration happened as recently as 1998. So this lighthouse was the last one to be automated? It was indeed, yes, the very last in the country. And it was that, obviously, once this ended, a whole era ended. It did, and no more keepers left in the entire U UK. Now, that meant a lot to you because you were a keeper here, weren't you? I was actually Ronson? here for three years as principal keeper. What, what was it like for you to be a lighthouse oh, keeper? Oh, it's great here. Was it? You can imagine. Coming up here, this is like a palace. It's still one of my favourite stations, there's no doubt about it. Yes. Looking at our Frith photo, the exterior of the lighthouse has changed very little. But inside, it's a different story. This is what superseded all the keepers. It's the uh, GPS monitoring system. And it's all completely automated now. Completely automated. Right. There's nothing to do with keepers. It, no romance. Well, nothing nice about yeah, well. it. Just click, 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 click. The North Foreland Lighthouse served a special purpose during the Second World War. The Germans didn't target British lighthouses because they needed them too. Not many people know that this actually was a, a radar jamming facility. Um, where you're standing now, for instance, there's a bank of electronics going across this room. So this equipment here is jamming the German radar? That's right, yes, yes. And it all completely secret? Nobody knows it's no, here? No, at the time it was all no, secret. It was just an amazing facility again in this old, old building. Of course. OK, John, here we are in the lantern. Right. <laughs> and the lights yeah, right. going. And the lights going, yes. It's this actual lens dates from the 1860s. Does it really? It's been adapted over the past couple hundred years with different illuminants. Uh, so when our picture was taken, this would have been here? Uh, this would have been here, and in the centre would have been a multi-wick oil burner. How extraordinary. Now, as we look out here, we can, we can see on this day there are just how many ships there are, aren't there? I mean, this is a... This is a very busy shipping area. It is. It did mark a, a very important turning point for, for vessels coming in and out of the Thames over there, um, coming through the Dover Straits, going up into northern Europe, and of course out towards Scandinavia and up to the uh, northeast coast ports in England. Mm -hmm. All the transcontinental shipping would come right past here. Why do you think in Britain we're so fascinated by lighthouses? What is it? Well, I think because we're a maritime nation and they're very iconic. Uh, wherever you go, a lighthouse is designed to be highly visible against the background. This is it. This is our... We're coming home, or we, we know That's we right, are. yes. I think I'd like to have uh, had a lighthouse. You'd be very good at it, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> In my picture of the lighthouse, I'm trying to show it representing the end of an era. Now, automated and unmanned. An exciting, dramatic picture is the idea. With this, the last of the manned lighthouses in the country, but now empty and the windows blocked in. 
So this is going to be my shot. And it's a very fancy camera, this. I've just got to press it on the top, and that'll be it. And there is my lighthouse picture. It looks mysterious, which is appropriate, because there is something about lighthouses which, well, it's mysterious. Why do we like them so much? And that's the joy of this series. We're finding out parts of the British psyche based on our history, which are very difficult to understand. For more details on...